Hey, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we are doing phantom marks. Phantom marks. I'm going to tell you all about them. Okay, we're going to start with Avid. Phantom marks. Here's how you do it. The easy way to turn on phantom marks is to come up here to your source window. Here, let me turn on my little pro mouse. Woo, there we go. Got the little bouncing orange ball. So we're up here and in the, in the, not the source window, I'm sorry, in the record side on the timeline side window. And I'm going to just come over here to like this blue bar and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say show phantom marks and that turns them on. And you see now I have these little two little blue marks. I'm going to explain that in just a second. The other way to get that is to come up here and go to settings. And under settings, you want to go to composer. Once you're in composer settings, you want to go to the edit tab and then phantom marks. Check that, say okay, and then get out of your settings. So we've got two ways to turn on phantom marks. So we've got our phantom marks on. Now notice when I move the blue bar, these two phantom marks are kind of moving in tangent with each other, uh, tangent in, in, in lockstep with each other. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Okay. I want to cut this other angle in. This will be a better visual. So let's say I want to cut this angle in right here. Uh, so I know that I want to cut it in over this long shot of Hong Kong, right? So I'm going to, with my blue bar right here, mark clip on Hong Kong. And I know I want it to fill on my timeline, this exact point. So if I come over here and I say, right when Denny brings his hands together, that's where I want my in. That's my neighbor, Denny, as you all may remember who are used to this channel, you will remember this is my neighbor, Denny. And this is the just outside my little cottage. Uh, so here's my in right there. Now, if you notice, here's a blue mark right here. Let's say for the sake of example, that right here, when he puts his hands down to the side, like that's the out. I know this is what I want. Here's my in, here's my out. But now I have this blue mark here, this phantom mark right here. That's showing me that for the the place that I've justified here that I want this to go into my timeline between my in and my out is only this long. It's showing me where my out would be if I wanted to fit this clip right in here and my in is right there. This is all the media I'm going to get. If I use this in, that's where my out is going to be because I want it to fit in this spot. So I can see visually that everything that I want between my in and my out is not going to fit in the small space that I've justified on my timeline. Now, if I remove my out, my in rather, so I'm going to do clear my in by doing shift I because that's where it's mapped on my keyboard. Now it shows me that if this is my out, just if I, if that's my out and I for sure want that when Denny's arms are down by his side, that's where I want my out. Now it's showing me my in. This is where my in would be if I were to cut this in this size, just this size that I've justified right here. So it's showing me with this blue phantom mark, that's where my in is going to be, right? If I were to, if I were to edit this in right now, it would back time it from my out and put it right in there. Now, if here is where I wanted my in and I'm going to lift my out, now it's showing me that that's where my out would be if my in is right here. So if I wanted this whole, like right when he gets his hands to his side, right? Right there, he does his hand like that, and now it's down. If I know I want this in and this out justified, I want, I know I want to use all of that and I want to start it where the Hong Kong shot is. I can lift my ins and my outs on my timeline and just put an in at the first frame of Hong Kong of the Hong Kong uh, skyline, and it's showing me, look, right here is where my out would be if I had 
uh, if I were to edit this completely in. So now it's showing me if I edited this whole thing in my timeline and my in starts here, it's showing me that my out is all the way over here. And I'm like, oh, that's too long. I can't fit this in this spot, right? So it's just giving me a for instance, right? Or if I know that I want my out to be there, I can lift my in, which I have on shift I again, I, O, in, out. For me, I've mapped to my keyboard, shift I, shift O, uh, for lift in and lift out, because it's very handy. And now it's showing me that all the way back here, I would I would cover up my little lonely clown and Hong Kong just to get this clip to fit in there. So it's very handy. It's really super handy when you're working with music, uh, and it works both ways, right? Like, so I've showed you, if I know I want to cover this entire clip right here, lock, stock, and barrel, with this clip, and I want this to start right here, I can see that my out would be right there with his hands by his side. And if that's what I want, then we're ready to go, and I can edit it in. But it's just giving me a visual. I can say, oh, well, this little extra tag, if that's where my out is, that's not gonna make it to my out, right? Because it's showing me, here's my phantom mark with my in and my out set here. It's showing me, you are only gonna get it up to this point. That's it. That's all that would fit from that end point. And if this little uh, stuff at the end doesn't matter to me, I can go ahead and edit it right in and we're good. Or I could lift my out here and just cut it in and know that it's gonna tromp all the way into my sunflower shot a little bit. But those are phantom marks. They're, they're a little, it's a little obtuse to explain, right? But they are super, super, super duper, duper useful. And I use them all the time. And especially uh, right now, it's not mapped properly to this keyboard setup. But when I have it mapped properly, I can hit one key and say, go to in one key and say, go to out. And it will go to the in and the out of the phantom marks, right? And it is super duper useful. But let's go over to Premiere and let's talk about phantom marks in Premiere. Okay, here we are on the Premiere side, and this is how Phantom Marks work in Premiere. They don't. They do not. There's no way to do them in Premiere. I wish there were. I love using them. I use them all the time in Avid. I just leave them on in Avid. But here in Premiere, you can't do it. If you know that, oh yeah, they added those and uh, and they do exist in Premiere. I did a Google search, I did an AI search, I can't find them, I don't think they exist. But if, you, if you're like, no, there's a workaround that works just like Phantom Marks, leave it in the comments for me because I want to know. I want to know, I absolutely want to know. Otherwise, you can't do it in Premiere. You can only do them in Avid and they're cool as heck in Avid. So go ahead and turn them on in Avid and start playing around. You're gonna dig it, but that is it. Nothing in Premiere, nada, sorry. Can't do it. Hey, if you're finally ready to master Avid and double your job and income opportunities, I've got a class for that. Click the link below in the description and use the coupon code YouTube24 to get 15% off on this course. Let's demystify Avid together.